The answer would in part be found by German scientist Rudolf Clausius, and it would form the basis of what would become known as the second law of thermodynamics. Rudolf Clausius was a brilliant German physics student from Pomerania who studied in Berlin and at a ridiculously young age became a very brilliant professor in Berlin and then in Zurich at the new technology university set up there in Switzerland. And in the 1850s and 60s, Clausius offered what is really the first coherent full-blown mathematical analysis of how thermodynamics works. Clausius realized that not only was there a fixed amount of energy in the universe, but that the energy seemed to be following a very strict rule. Put simply, energy in the form of heat always moved in one particular direction. This insight of his is, in fact, one of the most important ideas in the whole of science. As Clausius put it, heat cannot of itself pass from a colder to a hotter body. This is a very intuitive idea. If left alone, this hot mug of tea will always cool down. What this means is that heat will pass from the hot mug, say, to my hand, and then again from my hand to my chest. This might seem completely obvious, but it was a crucial insight. The flow of heat was a one-way process that seemed to be built very fundamentally into the workings of the entire universe. Of course, objects can get hotter, but you always need to do something to them to make this happen. Left alone, energy seems to always go from being concentrated to being dispersed. One of my favorite statements in science was made by the biochemist Albert St. George, who said that science is all about seeing what everyone else has seen, but thinking what no one else has thought. And he, Rudolf Clausius, um, looked at the everyday world and saw what everyone else had seen, that heat does not flow spontaneously from a cold body to a hot body. It always goes the other way. But he didn't just say, ah, I see that. He actually sat down and thought about it. Clausius brought together all these ideas about how energy is transferred and put them into mathematical context. It could be summarized by this equation. Now, what Clausius did was introduce a new quantity he called entropy, this letter S. Basically, what it's saying in the context of this equation is that as heat is transferred from hotter to colder bodies, entropy always increases. Entropy seemed to be a measure of how heat dissipates or spreads out. As hot things cool, their entropy increases. It appeared to Clausius that in any isolated system, this process would be irreversible. Clausius was so confident about his mathematics that he figured out that this irreversible process was going on out there in the wider cosmos. 
He speculated that the entropy of the entire universe had to be increasing towards a maximum and that there was nothing we could do to avoid this. This idea became known as the second law of thermodynamics and it turned out to be stranger and more beautiful, more universal than anything Clausius could have imagined. The second law of thermodynamics seemed to say that all things that gave off heat were in some way connected together. All things that gave off heat were part of an irreversible process that was happening everywhere. A process of spreading out and dispersing. A process of increasing entropy. It seemed that somehow the universe shared the same fate as a cup of tea. The wonderful thing about the, the Victorian scientists is that they could make these great leaps and that they could see that their study of thermometer in a beaker actually could be, trans could be extrapolated, could be enlarged to encompass the whole universe. Despite the successes of thermodynamics, in the middle of the 19th century, there was great debate and confusion about the subject. What exactly was this strange thing called entropy? And why was it always increasing? Answering this question would take an incredible intellectual leap, but it would end up revealing the truth about energy and the many forms of order and disorder we see in the universe around us. Many scientists would tackle the mysterious concept of entropy, but one more than any other would shed light on the truth. He'd show what entropy really was and why, over time, it always must increase. His name was Ludwig Boltzmann, and he was one of science's true revolutionaries. <laughs> 